Hey friends, my name is Sean Davis, and today we're gonna talk about the five things that I wish I knew way sooner in Premiere Pro. And when I'm saying way sooner, I mean day one, the first time I edited something, I wish I utilized these things. Now, even though I'm using Premiere Pro, the things that I'm gonna talk about should be present on any video editing software, so feel free to follow along anyways. And with that, let's jump right into it. The first thing that I wish I knew sooner in Premiere Pro was setting in and out points for my clips before I start editing them in my timeline. So whenever you import footage into Premiere Pro, it starts off in your project panel, and then from there, you can take it and bring it to your timeline to edit it. But what I like to do is before I actually even start bringing things into my timeline is look at my clip here in the source panel and then figuring out what part of that clip I want to work with. So let's say I want to take this part right here. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard and that'll set an end point, and then I'm going to scrub to where I want that clip to stop and then I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard and then there I have just told Premiere Pro which part of that clip I wanna work with. So now when I drag this clip and bring it onto my timeline, I'm only working with that small section and not the entire clip. Now for one or two clips, you might think, big deal, dude. But whenever you have a ton of clips, maybe you're shooting like a sporting event or some sort of highlight reel for a company and you have tons of clips but you only need two or three seconds from each of those clips, Setting in and out points first before you bring them into your timeline can be a game changer. So in and out points. The second thing that I wish I knew way sooner was how to drag just the video or just the audio onto the timeline. So if you look here at this clip that we set the in and out points on, if I drag it from right here and bring it onto the timeline, it brings both the video and the audio over, which is great if you need both the video and the audio. But let's say this is a B-roll clip and I only want the video, not the audio. Well, if I click this icon right here and drag it down to the timeline, it brings just the video over. And vice versa, maybe you're doing a voiceover and you don't don't need the video part, just the audio. If you click this icon and drag it down, it will bring only the audio over. Again, this can be a huge time saver when you have a bunch of clips that you're working with. So yeah. So the first few things that we talked about were how to more effectively work with the footage in your project panel to get it ready for the timeline. But now that we have footage on the timeline, let's talk about something that can make your life way easier with a bunch of clips, and those are adjustment layers. In case you don't know, an adjustment layer is kind of like an invisible layer to start with that sits on top of multiple clips, and then any effect that you add to that adjustment layer is applied to all the clips below it. So if you look here in Premiere Pro, if I click right here, new item, adjustment layer, hit OK, and then now I have an adjustment layer sitting here in my project panel, if I drag it on top of my clips and stretch it out so it lasts the entire length of my video or over any of the clips that I want. Now, let's say I'm ready to color grade all these clips right here. Let's say this is like a talking head interview. Maybe I got a couple camera angles right here and I'm ready to color it all together. So instead of making those changes to just one clip and then copying and paste it all over, it'll save you time to make those changes to this adjustment layer and then anything that's underneath the adjustment layer will also get those same effects. So yeah, it'll save you a bunch of time. The fourth thing we're gonna talk about is playback looping. What is that? Well, it's exactly how it sounds. It's when you take a part on your timeline and tell Premiere to loop it and make it play over and over and over and over again forever until you tell it to stop. Now, why would you wanna use this? Well, there's a few different ways that I've personally used that. Let's say, for example, I have a, a clip and the audio needs some work. I need to EQ it, I need to denoise it or something. Instead of trying to apply an effect and make those tweaks before the clip stops playing and then go back and play it again, I can just have that loop over and over and over again while I'm tweaking the audio. Another way I've used it is, let's say you've done some sort of visual effect and you wanna see how does that effect hold up if you loop it back and forth and you keep seeing that effect happen over and over again, does it hold up? Do you see any, any flaws that need tweaked and things like that? So again, those are just a couple of the many reasons you could use looping playback. But let me show you how to do it real quick. So what you wanna do is you look at your timeline and figure out which part you want to loop. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to set that in point and then O to set that out point. And then here we go on the timeline. This is exactly what I want to loop over and over again. But it's not gonna start looping yet. What we need to do is we need to tell Premiere to loop it. So I'm gonna go up here and click this icon right here if you don't see it, you just click right here where it says button editor. Here's the icon, you click and drag it down and boom, there you have it. But now once I click this on, now when I hit play, it loops over and over and over again for as long as you want. And it's as simple as that. But now, whenever you're done making those tweaks, you definitely wanna make sure you turn it back off right here. And then you can clear this in and out point by just right clicking and hitting clear in and out. And there you go. And the fifth and final thing I wish I would've utilized sooner, keyboard shortcuts. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single Premiere Pro keyboard shortcut because that would be a whole video in and of itself, but I did wanna take the time and make sure it was actually an item on this list because learning the keyboard shortcuts in your video editing program is so important to making your life easier, making your experience more enjoyable, and to bring you back and keep you editing. If you look up here on the screen, these are just a few of the keyboard shortcuts that I use on the daily that make my life so much easier. Now, I don't know every single Premiere Pro keyboard, but I can tell you every single time I pick up one and integrate it into my workflow, my life becomes just a little bit better. So yeah, keyboard shortcuts, 
learn some, use some, learn some more, use some more, and uh, yeah. So yeah, there it is. Five things I wish I knew way sooner when I started editing. Hopefully this video helped you, you found it enjoyable or something. If you're still here, then hopefully I did something right and you could let me know that by hitting the thumbs up button. If you like these kind of videos and comedy style videos, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel, check out some of my videos. I'd love to have you here, but you know what? That's it for today. Until next time, learn a keyboard shortcut and have a great day.